uh, good evening everybody and welcome to this uh, ortho tv webinar the 13th webinar of our series and we welcome dr taran nagda for his talk on what books do not teach about treating elbow trauma in children uh, welcome sir and we are all eager to hear your talk so uh, i was unlucky the 12th time but 13th time is lucky for me right 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 the 13th lucky uh, webinar for me and uh, everybody uh, uh, who are part of iorg group uh, on facebook and on auto tv uh, on the, the web website who are participating in this this webinar they are lucky because what i am going to discuss uh, is not given any books uh suppose we learn orthopedics uh, initially by reading books but but 80% what we read uh, what we practice is not in, in any books and uh, uh what it comes from is the place we work in and through work in books uh, uh what is the recipe of success, success ashok uh, you know this is a gentleman who is a tea maker is banarasi chai wala and uh, Uh, he he start this shop at four in the morning and it goes well midnight. And once I asked him, Banar, uh, uh, what is recipe of your success? And he told me, told me there are uh, three ingredients. Okay. Head is uh, where the recipe comes. You a uh, thought process comes. Uh, you know we read, we memorize, uh, uh, we store all the data in the head, and uh, uh, second most important ingredient is the hat. so this skill development so what we be read what we see on auto tv we practice through our hands but the most important uh, you know ingredient of success and making tea he says it is uh, chai dimag se banti hai haathon se bakti hai lekin if your heart is not uh, in this then that this doesn't come now i am very happy ashok that your heart lies in uh, auto education and uh, you know a lot of people are being benefited by the uh, webinar series um uh, it's very very important because uh, there are the things which are not given in books you know you can travel in bombay's local trains and and travel steeper class you right. know if you modify like little bit and uh, the series which i'm going to take throughout you know this year is going to be all about these little jugards in pediatric trauma what works in our situation and what doesn't work and and most of these things uh, somehow are out of syllabus my sort of real real inspiration to start this series of talks was put by robert uh, kiyosaki and he says that if you want to be rich and happy don't go to school and i could say the same thing that uh, if you want to be a good surgeon don't attend conferences but uh, attend auto tv webinars because you will be a small topic over uh, an extended period of time where uh, the speaker can give you everything he has experience in last many many years and then there will be questions and answers and queries i know which can be answered so this uh, this today's uh, sort of interaction with uh, dear guests from all over the world is going to be about uh, a simple thing called elbow x rays and uh, this uh, so the name was suggested by mandar agashe uh, last year when we had a small function in sth hospital and he said me to take on how to avoid misleading diagnosis and misleading x rays in elbow trauma so this is a five year old child uh, who came to a casualty with elbow injury and uh, the resident and the radiologist on call report x rays now the child was still painful we removed this the possibility is there an injury in this x you know to, to diagnose uh, if there is a fracture uh, you know you do two things you look at uh, you know this pad pad and you can see that the posterior fat pad is elevated here and that uh, some suspicion of uh, you know some fracture here but what really is important is to cause this line and this is known as anterior humeral line normally the anterior humeral line passes through center of capitula if it is passing through anterior surface of capitula and if it's passing through anterior surface of capitula it tells you that the lower end of humerus is tilted posteriorly in this child my pet sign positive tells you that this is grade 
supracondylar fracture with a posterior tilt and uh, you know this should be of course created with an immobilization um, and and child should do well so the first rule uh, sort of uh, this out of the book rule which i want to share with you is that drawing lines helps it helps in geometry it also helps in pediatric orthopedics this is a child where you know what a uh, same principle i'm going to sort of illustrate uh, uh, in a in a in a more uh, determinant fashion i want to uh, you know ask people who are on the facebook uh, uh, if they can type and tell me what is the diagnosis they feel this is a child suffering it was a four year old child with uh, elbow injury ashok uh, what do you think this is hi since i have already seen this presentation so i am really biased <laughs> okay okay <laughs> okay so you know a lot of people uh, this diagnose as elbow dislocation and uh, 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 again uh, if you want to differentiate from elbow dislocation between elbow dislocation and a facial injury uh, is a very simple thing it's on the opposite side when you take it on the opposite side this is the capitulum and this is the radio the line and you know that when you draw a line through radius it always go to center of cap and if you draw this line on the injured side the capitulum line is intact now if it was elbow dislocation capitulum will not move with radius so radio capitulum line will be disrupted if the radio capitulum line is intact it means capitulum has moved medially in this case up the radial head so this is actually the entire physis which is unoccupied not seen uh, and then uh, when you now know uh, see this like oh, that this is complete facial separation of limb documents and this has to be treated just by close reduction and if it's unstable you can put couple of uh, an arthrogram so a simple diagnosis like this can be made just by drawing a you don't need an ultrasound you don't need an mri one more clue ashok you know to diagnosing a uh, uh, complete facial separation is that displacement in this case is medial post medial if the displacement is lateral it is more likely to be elbow dislocation right but displacement uh, will be complete facial separation so that uh, many universal truths in life very to line will say that you know mathematics is a is a truth uh, satya is truth uh, uh, presence of almighty is a truth similar to that is a pediatric orthopedic truth it says that radio capital line elbow always pass through center of the capitulum in any position position of the elbow but it's the lateral or any kind of oblique you know it always passes through center of the capitulum now uh, there are two types of fractures uh, which we classify depending on the radio capital line the radio capital line will be disturbed even of elbow dislocation here we show elbow dislocation radio capital line and it is disturbed and in lateral condyle fracture which is is displaced again the radio capital line will be dis disturbed because capital will move laterally in the radial head now the radio capital line is maintained in a supracondylar fracture because the lower humerus moves along with the radius and similarly it is maintained in facial separation so it's very very simple there are just six fractures and if you can differentiate them into two broad groups based just on one line uh, your job becomes very very simple now these are two x rays uh, you know which the children came on the same day one is a small child and uh, uh, another also is a six year old child and both have uh, elbow injuries and uh, Uh, again, I would uh, like my Facebook friends to sort of, you know, define and and write down, you know, what they think is a diagnosis here. Okay, yeah, the the image on the left, and what is the the, the diagnosis in the image on the right? Are they same or different? And if you have to differentiate, you know, both they both were uh, told by my resident as lateral condyle fractures, but if you look closely, both. and how do you differentiate again by drawing lines so you draw this radio capitular line in this the radio capitular line is maintained and you know from the previous slide that if radio capitular line is maintained uh, uh this fracture which is going through the physis has 
complete facial separation. Now, one more line which is disrupted in, in facial separation is the humoro ulnar line. So, this is a case where humoro ulnar line is disrupted, but the radio line is maintained, and this is a complete facial separation. X ray on the right here, the radio capital line um, uh, is not maintained, it is disrupted. But humoro ulnar line is maintained and it meets uh, at the elbow joint. So, this a case of uh, uh, this uh, complete uh, tilted lateral condyle fracture and the case of a complete facial separation. Now, drawing line helps in this case because the first case you are going to treat by close induction and by while the second case you will either do an arthrogram and assisted reduction, get a perfect reduction and then fix it with multiple K wires or a, or a screw. If a good reduction is not possible, you will not hesitate to open the second fracture then completely good articular and facial reduction and then fix it with uh, K wires, divergent K wires or a screw. So just drawing a line helps you to make a diagnosis and decide to manage. One more case where lines help and here uh, you can draw a radio capitular line and you, you know that uh, radial, radial upper hand and capitular they are not in line so this is a montagia lesion or okay. something which is very easy to diagnose. But what about this? This is a child who had injured three weeks back and the elbows was still painful and uh, there is no fracture of the ulna here. But if you draw a radiocapital line, you immediately know that uh, this is a multiple lesion where uh, radiocapital uh, uh, dislocation has been missed. But what has happened to ulna? To know what has happened to ulna, we have one more line. This is known as Obarak's line. Line drawn along the posterior border of ulna. Uh, if the ulna is lifted off from this line like an arch or, or uh, like it means that uh, there is a plastic deformation of the ulna. So this is type 1 montagia uh, lesion where there is anterior angulation of the ulna with plastic deformation and radial head uh, dislocation. And this should be reduced, uh, this should be treated by reducing the ulna by osteoclasis and at the same time putting the radial head back into its original position and giving slab in hyperflexion. So drawing lines in your diagnosis, and this is very, very important. Again, this is a patient where something what was obvious was, was fracture of upper end of ulna. What was not obvious was uh, subluxation of the great capital joint. And then this patient was treated inadequately and with malunion of upper end of ulna and persistent dislocation of uh, radius. So this is tight three point lesion would have been diagnosed easily if the line was drawn by the treating center. This is a seven year old um, uh, child with elbow injury. Now can someone tell me what fracture is present? I'm going away from lines here and we are coming to different views here. Okay, so this was again passed off as a normal X-ray um, and, and uh, when child came next week, you know, I asked the resident to take an X-ray in internal rotation. And when you X-ray in internal rotation, you can immediately diagnose that this is a lateral condyle fracture, around two millimeters back. And this view, which was uh, described by our dear Professor so from South Korea, is known as the internal oblique view. And uh, lateral condyle fracture, which are in posterolateral direction, you know, they are better diagnosed on an internal rotation view. Um, and especially the displacement you can appreciate much better on an interpretation view. So uh, this rule tells us that a different view helps. So drawing lines helps and a different view taken many times helps. We come to again, you know, Jodi of fractures. Again, we are having two similar looking x-rays. You know, one year old medial side pain and injury. And this is a six-year-old child with medial side pain and injury. And the, and the doctor was absolutely rapid in this child while diagnosis diagnosed epicondyle injury because epicondyle is ossified in a 12 year old child because it's present it can get fractured in a six year old child medial epicondyle is not yet ossified and if it's not ossified how can it get fractured so this is a misdiagnosis in a six year old child if and, and how you can be sure, you know, of whether medial epicondyle is present or no. 
do not remember the mnemonic all the time. You may not know at what is decision takes place. Simplest thing to do is to take x-ray of the opposite side. So when you take an x-ray of the opposite side in the six-year-old child, you come to know that the medial epicondyle is not ossified on the other. So of course, there is no medial epicondyle fracture, but this is the medial condyle fracture, where this is a metaphyseal piece, and there is a large uh, cartilaginous which is not seen on the x-ray. So taking opposite side x-ray helps. So this is my third tip of the day, is that always whenever in doubt in elbow x-ray, take opposite side x-ray. So draw lines, take different things, AP lateral oblique, and take opposite side of side x-ray to make your diagnosis very clear. So again, uh, 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 coming back to some more x-rays, you know, uh, about the physis. So this is a child who had a fracture. Of course, some very obvious is a radial neck fracture. Okay, but what is not apparent is a fracture of the upper end of uh, is this olecranon fracture? Six-year-old child. This was, you know, labeled as an olecranon fracture. But but uh, if you uh, uh, if you really s uh, know the apophysis, the upper end of the olecranon apophysis does not ossify till that near stage. Child is six year age. So, so the olecranon apophysis would be here. Actually, what is present here is the metaphyseal fracture of the olecranon which is intra-articular and this patient needs to be treated by open reduction to cave and a tension, tension band with a vital sutra which will get absorbed later on. So uh, it's very, very important to know the epiphyseal ossification on, on, on the X-rays. And uh, you know, some mnemonics will help you. So of course in Europeans and in Asians, there is little difference, but if one has to very simply remember you know, we know, remember this mnemonic called CRITO, C-R-I-T-O-E. So, in females, it becomes 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11. And in boys, it will become 2, 4, 6, 8, and 12. These are the, 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 the years in age, you know, where the ossification will start. And uh, if you want a more deep sort of a mnemonic or, a, or this, uh, it is known as come ride my train of love. You know, it's same as Crit, and uh, right. uh, this train now will tell you uh, that <laughs> you will not miss this train if you know the mnemonic. So, this patient, medial epicondyle fracture, we did an MRI. It showed that uh, you know the soft tissue injury wasn't very severe. The medial collateral light element was intact. So, it's a soft tissue injury treated conservatively, and this child did very well. He's a batsman under 16 team. And uh, did not require any fixation. If you this child, seven-year-old child, this was known as a medial epicondyle abrasion, you know, and someone wanted to fix this with a suture. But if you realize in seven years, medial epicondyle doesn't ossify. This was a medial condyle fracture. Such a large piece. What you see on X-ray is a small piece. Actually, it is a very very large piece. Makes it very very unstable fracture, unstable elbow joint. And uh, this was very well diagnosed with the help of the MRI. So what you do is initially put the needle on the lateral aspect of the elbow above the radial head, and we inject the head. And you can see that the entire medial condyle is very well delineated. And then you can take some and inject, and then you can see that it's a large piece of the medial condyle. And then this was fixed uh, uh, by an open reduction. The alnana was separated. Uh, the medial flex of origin was protected and uh, uh, perfect interarticular reduction and this was fixed with a wire and hoop. So uh, knowing the, the ossification centers uh, really helps. Uh, this is a child uh, who came to us one month post-injury and elbow was very stiff. You know, we tried the fracture, you know, where is the injury here? But you know, everything seemed to be all right. And um, this is the time, uh, you know, when this X-ray was presented to me and it take X-ray of opposite side. So opposite side showed that this child uh, is eight year old, has a medial epicondyle seen on the opposite side X-ray. There is the epicondyle on this X-ray. You, know, you really can't see it. Where is it's gone? It's here. So the medial epicondyle fracture, where the medial epicondyle has got entrapped into the joint here. And that's why this has uh, put the movement. So the next rule is that 
looking for what is missing also helps. And uh, if you look for what is missing, you will find it somewhere, and that will give you clue to the diagnosis. Um, this then uh, you know one issue which we commonly face, uh, what is known as seemingly undisplaced lateral condyle fracture. So this is uh, an onco surgeon's son who had a with a faint line here, and this is a Christian daughter who also had the lateral condyle fracture. And they came to me same day, same time to the same hospital, but they had different managements, different treatment. And then this treatment was because you can see here, it's a fracture which starts here but ends here, it doesn't go beyond that. So this is type one lateral condyle fracture. Here the fracture goes much, much, much beyond. But being the children, you know, I had to convince them that in, in case A, a conservative approach was what was necessary and it is required to be fixed in C2. And, and that was based on MR because here the MRI showed that the fracture line starts here and ends in metaphysis, does not go into the cartilage. So this is a stable fracture treated in three weeks plaster. The patient did very well. This same uh, similar looking patient here, seemingly undisplaced lateral condyle fracture, starts in metaphysis, goes all the way through the epiphysis and through the articular surface. So this is a very unstable fracture because it is easily treated by the common extents the origin, even if the patient is in plaster. Plus presence of the joint fluid here will bathe the fracture and, and, and will have a very high incidence of non union This needs to be fixed in C2. So one patient goes home after the plaster and the patient stays in the hospital has and gets fixed and this is based on a very very simple observation and then doing imaging so the rule next is that imaging helps and you must do imaging the right imaging for that fracture because uh, you should know what you're going to look uh, for in that fracture. This four year old child again a, a doctor's uh, son you can look that of course there is upper polygonal fracture but one doesn't know you know what is happening to this radial fracture is it just tilted and can be close reduced or it's completely and uh, here the MRI done shows that you know this was an over lateral condyle ossification center, but actually it is completely turned around 90 degrees. This is the articular surface, and then this is the fracture site, which is now facing the physis. And then this could not be possibly treated by a close reduction. What one requires is to open it and accurately fix it. So imaging helped three times. This is a child who had a optic fracture, and again, confusion was was this superficial fracture? Or a lateral condyle fracture. Did MR and this MRI showed that this fracture started here, goes through physis, but exits on a non-articular portion. This is not an intra-articular fracture. It is not a typical lateral condyle fracture which needs to be fixed. It large metaphysical origin. In fact, you can call this as a very, very supracondylar fracture or, or, or a, a, a variant of a facial separate. And this patient was treated just by, by a close reduction and thinning. We did not open this and he did that. This is a three year old child uh, with an elbow injury. And uh, again, here, these were completely normal. You know, we called the child for five days, still had tenderness, pain. And MRI here showed that there was contusion on the olecranon. So this was fracture, or even fracture of the olecranon. And this uh, was then managed with a slab in extension. To give breath to the olecranon and this child ultimately healed. This child again, you know, x ray is looking uh, very, very benign, but uh, closely see there is a intra articular fracture of the of the radial head. You can see the intra articular fracture of the radial head, and along with that, there is subluxation of the radiocapillar joint. So this is x ray looks benign, the MR shows you the detail, and uh, you know, it's, uh, it's very clearly seen here that uh, this is not a benign injury, you know, it's an the fracture, you need to fix up and at the same time repair the annular ligament so that the radiocapillar joint becomes stable. And uh, uh, it's very important that these subtle injuries are uh, recognized on the X-ray, appropriate imaging is done and, and then uh, uh, possibly you can do well. I don't see what mine doesn't go. Today in in the elbow injuries, prone read up, they come in different formats. They come with such a variety that you need to keep your eyes open. 
you need to keep your mind active while treating an elbow injury in a child. So this child who went to a very very famous orthopedic surgeon and uh, on you know, this X-ray was uh, thought to be normal and the patient was treated to last over three weeks. But too closely, that's a faint line here, and it was thought to be fracture of the capitulum. And uh, this we diagnosed later on on, on MR that uh, you can see that so this is a sleep of capitulum, uh, you know, which has come very, very subtly, but it's a devastating injury. This child had absolutely stiff elbow, uh, you know, three months after the injury. When we explored his elbow, there was a big crater on the capitulum. You can see here a big crater on the capitulum, and it was completely degenerated, you know. Uh, so, a, a very simple looking injury can have a bad result if not picked up properly. Now, this should have been fixed on day one, but this was a day one failure. And, uh, you know, this patient had to undergo uh, deployment and radial head excision and ultimately we did well. Um, uh, this child uh, who had a fall in 2016 and was diagnosed as radial head dislocation. And what was missed here is that this child has congenital radial narcinotrosis and this was a congenital radial head dislocation. This is not an injury. This is a congenital problem. And uh, though a reduction was attempted, it actually locked the, the elbow of the child. And this child uh, later on underwent the surgery uh, where we excise uh, the, the, the radial head and, and the elbow. And finally, this elbow at good range of movement. So many times, congenital radial head dislocation can be missed as a traumatic one. And one has to be very, very careful. Uh, you know, and, and this this gets done by uh, taking a good history. So summarize. Uh, uh, what I want to say this is not again given it, but it's up on Auto TV for you you to refer uh, for or to share with your friends um, and and your colleagues. Uh, so these are the important points. Lines help. We've seen that anterior humeral line, the radio capital line, the Bowman's angle. All these lines will help. Proper views will help, internal oblique and external oblique views will help you. Opposite things will help you, especially in medial epicondyle fractures and facial injuries. Knowing epifactial center crucifixion and knowing the pneumatic helps in many of the facial injuries. Looking for missing helps in medial epicondyle fractures. Imaging helps in treating what is known as uh, uh, thrash lesions. Uh, these are the radiological lesions which were thought to be normal but have. Uh, a serious injury of the elbow. Lastly, you know, this is a ugly case which I want to present is that uh, this patient uh, came to an orthopedic surgeon uh, and uh, he diagnosed this as, you know, fracture of the upper end of radius and uh, elbow dislocation. And a close reduction was attempted. And uh, that this was the uh, He was not very happy and he, he referred the child. And uh, when I asked the mother, uh, uh, she told me that, oh, Dr. Vasito, some problem he had in even elbow. And when we had an infantogram of this child, we noted that there was an upper and radial dysplasia of this child, which is congenital in nature. So, last tip for uh, everyone here from Auto TV and on the IORG Facebook site, and, and everyone who's going to watch this video later on. Talking to parent helps. You know, it's very important that uh, you take a good history before seeing the X-rays. Mm. Uh, uh, this is something which clinch your diagnosis in situations. So, uh, with these seven rules of highly successful pediatric elbow fracture uh, diagnosis, you know, uh, I will sort of end this presentation and. Um, uh, part two of this is going to come up uh, later on uh, next Friday. You know, next Friday, same time. I'm going to be at Gudada in Kutch for a camp. And same time, we will uh, uh, relay live uh, what is not given in textbooks about managing lateral condyle fractures. So I would request you to uh, come back next Friday for the next session of uh, what textbooks do not teach you about elbow trauma in children. And uh, Ashok. Uh, if, uh, if there are any questions, I'm very happy to take. Uh, uh, I really want to invite everyone here for uh, two events. Uh, and the events are about pediatric trauma. 
This first event is happening on the 15th August. Um, it is the International Fractures in Children Day uh, at TraumaCon. So at TraumaCon, we have entire day of fractures in children. Uh, people who have registered for TraumaCon get to attend this completely free. So you come to Hall D and you can attend this without paying any money. You have to reach at 8 a.m. in the morning. We are starting early. Well, so those who have not registered for TraumaCon, because registrations are now closed, it's full, and they are not able to register by paying just 2,500, you know, uh, online registration, uh, they can attend uh, this program, this wonderful uh, program, Titul Parek from Cincinnati, Patwardhan, uh, myself, Taral Nagda, Kripal Naik, Manda Ragashe, Binod, Tishet, Sanjit Paidya, all of us are going to take you through lots of cases and problems in pediatric fractures for the entire day. So it's my invitation for all of you to attend this. And uh, uh, if you still want more, then on uh, 17th, 18th, and 19th August, we have a I fix live at Tempor at the hospital where it's not only lectures, but almost 15 to 20 surgeries about fractures in children uh, are going to be projected live uh, in, in, at Ganga Hospital. And uh, this program is also very exclusive. You can uh, go to Ganga Hospital website and register for the Ganga Hospital Artifix. So, is these two announcements, uh, Ashok, yeah. Anyway. yeah. Uh, thank you, Taral, sir. It was an excellent presentation. Although I have seen it already, but I again pick up some new points all the time. Uh, so there are a few questions. One is from Dr. Praful. He is asking, what are your indications for an MRI in a pediatric elbow trauma? So I uh, try to diagnose all my pediatric fractures only with X-rays. Right. Should be done. Uh, I reserve MRI when I am not sure of the diagnosis. Most of the time I do an MRI is uh, simply undisplayed lacrocondyle fracture where I'm not sure whether I should conserve or operate. And that time doing uh, MRI in the sedation can save a complete anesthesia and surgery for a child. And I've done it a number of times and saved a lot of children with undisplaced lacrocondyle fractures from uh, percutaneous spinning. And other indications for doing an MR um, are uh, the osteochondral injuries, which are very, very difficult to pick up. Uh, on, um, if I have to diagnose, uh, however, uh, 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 fracture of uh, which are unusual and which are in metaphyseal areas, then I do a CT scan. So, uh, uh, so uh, CT will show a fracture, metaphyseal fracture better. MRI will just show edema. So, am I able to diagnose a metaphyseal fracture? I don't do imaging very, very frequently, but when required, I don't hesitate. Right, right. So, uh, there is another question on what is your approach to delayed presentation of these pediatric elbow injuries? Till what time will you go for operative when, when you will... I mean, I don't know, there won't be one answer for it, but that's the so, question. So, so, I have a very delighted approach to delayed presentations. Right. You know? Uh, and that approach is very simple that there are a lot of delayed presentations which can be treated conservative. Right. For example, a supracondylar fracture comes after 10 days or 15 days, we will lit balunite many times. And, and if, uh, if there is a deformity later on, uh, uh, you know, we can we can treat this. Uh, I have seen delayed presentations of medial neck fractures where the angulation is less than 40 degrees and it's going to remodel. So right. every delayed presentation doesn't have to be operated. Uh, how, there are many delayed presentations uh, where there is a functional problem uh, which need to be addressed. For example, delayed Montagia. Mm -hmm. uh, is delayed Montagia, the treatment doesn't have to be for radial aid. It doesn't have to be focused there. It has to be focused on the olecrona. We do an olecrona ostotomy and, and that will cause the radial aid to uh, fall in place most of the time. Right. Uh, delayed lateral condyle fracture is, is a challenge. And uh, when it comes specially much, much delayed, I have seen lateral condyle fractures present in three years, okay. uh, 13 years, 23 years, even 35 years. Uh -huh. you know, original fracture. And then here, in lateral condyle fracture, which are delayed, the treatment is not treatment of non-uni. 
the treatment of non union here is not obvious in this system. but you try to fix the problem is the patient so if patient has you get a marcus you do a osteotomy if the patient has ulna no pulse you do ulna no transposition if patient has instability you fix the fracture in situ so the so management uh uh in a lacrimal fracture will not depend on what the fracture is. it will depend on what the patient problem is so right. uh, it's it's a it's a uh, very interesting topic and again we have an entire session on delayed presentations at the i fix day at tomacon so those who interested the uh, come over and be live so it's not going to be relayed live but you can come there and uh, you know uh, uh, one to one interaction on delayed presentations right so there is another question by dr uh, kashyap he is asking when do you do an arthrogram what is your indication Yes. So, arthrogram uh, are my extended eyes or extended vision, and when I want to see the articular surface, I will do an arthrogram. I'll give an example. If I'm dealing with a lateral corneal fracture which is undisplaced, which I'm going to fix in C2, I don't need an arthrogram. I need an arthrogram if I'm deal with a lateral corneal fracture which is split open. By closing the split, I can uh, you know get a reduction and close uh, do close fixation. However, if the lateral corneal fracture is completely displaced, you don't need an arthrogram because you're going to open it anyways. So, arthrogram is used for diagnosis, especially uh, in cases of middle corneal fractures, um, uh, in case of uh, uh, you know complete facial separation. That's one indication. Second indication, arthrogram is done is to assist your reduction to see the articular surface. My third indication, which is very interesting, to do an arthrogram. is to see the the delineation of the the, the bone better and there are two indication i remember in a very young child a radial head fracture radial neck fracture you can't see the see the fragment very well so if you do an arthrogram you see the entire fragment and reduction becomes much easier it is very low supracondylar fracture because most of it is going to be cartilaginous very very difficult to see on a cr and then fix if you do an arthrogram you see the outline very well And it's very become very easy to reduce fix. So these are my indications in an arthrogram. And uh, again, it's an art one should learn. Uh, we used to do through a lateral approach previously, you know, by putting a needle uh, up of the radial head. But now this is my favorite approach is a posterior approach. I do it from behind, but mm -hmm. above the uh, olecranon because when you put a needle like that and then inject dye. The spillage of the dye is less. So next time, if you are doing an, an arthrogram procedure, you know, try the posterior approach, and you will be very happy uh, with the procedure. Okay. Uh, there is another question by Dr. Harshad. I don't know whether it's relevant here, but he is asking, can you explain about varus and valgus impacted fractures, and uh, do stress views help in elbow fractures? Pediatrics. It is out of the syllabus question, but we are talking out of the textbooks anyway, Rashad. <laughs> right. Absolutely fine. So this is a very, very interesting question. Varus impacted supracondylar fractures and valgus impacted supracondylar fractures both exist. Right. Varus impacted supracondylar fractures will give rise to bilateral varus deformity. And then way to diagnose is to draw again line. The first point: draw lines from Bowman's angle. Extension of line is Bowman's angle. If you Bowman's angle, if there is varus, uh, then that tells you that there is viral varus impact. You need to disimpact the impacted fracture, which will be possible. So many times there are valgus impacted fracture, which are more dangerous because valgus is not tolerated very well. So valgus impacted fractures have to be again disimpacted and fixed with prosthesis. Right. Okay. So do stress views help in these? Stress views uh, uh, not help us. Giving stress, they do give stress to the surgeon. Many <laughs> times, what to do? But giving stress disimpacts the fracture. Right. So that way, you are right that you will see the movement opening uh, when you do, uh, you know, varus and valgus stress. So that way, you know, giving doing stress views uh, may be of some importance. Okay. So in pediatric elbow fractures, which fracture you'll be most worried about growth arrest? And you'll counsel the pa parents proactively. Absolutely. In pediatric uh, elbow fractures, you know, you don't have to worry about the growth arrest. 
Right. Because we have read in first MBBS that you know towards the me I flee and the oh, I grow. Uh, lower end of radius and upper end of humerus grow very well. Elbow is the sluggish grower. It is a lazy poker. And even if there is a growth arrest, it does not have major problem. Not lateral condyle fractures, which we fix, end up with growth of lateral condyle, but it does not produce significant deformity. So, growth arrest, fortunately, is not a big problem. But malalignment. Elbow injury is a major problem, which will lead to restricted range of movements. Okay. I think there are no more questions as such currently, but uh, people are welcome to post questions uh, till tomorrow in the next 24 hours. And I hope the sir will be there to answer them. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir, for your time. Yeah. Thanks, Ashok. Uh, it's been wonderful uh, you know, uh, coming again. Uh, I'm sorry, last week I couldn't come live. Uh, I had to travel to Indore for medical surgery and from the airport I couldn't get signal. It was raining really badly in Bombay that day. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Ashok was gracious enough to replace that with video. But uh, I'm, I'm happy that uh, today I've been able to come live. And uh, so if uh, people like it, then we'll have a series of out-of-textbook uh, 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 you know, lectures on fractures and children. Thanks. Have a good time. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much.